Oh boy, it's just another great day in the Pokemon world. Wouldn't you agree, Pikachu? Pika, Pika, Pikachu! Let's go see what Brock and Misty are doing. Hey, Brock. Hey, Misty. Oh, hey, Ash. What, what are you guys doing? We're just rolling boba blunts, Ash. What? Boba blunts? What's that? Oh, Ash, don't worry about it. All we're doing is pulling off some harmless leaves off a of Bulbasaur to roll them up and smoke them. Baba, baba, baba star. See, even Bulbasaur's into it. Take a hit, Bulba. Bulbasaur. I don't know, guys. Smoke, smoking Bulba blunt seems like it would be an abuse of our Pokemon. Oh, come on, Ash. Don't be a square. Yeah, Ash. Come on, we fight these monsters in blood sports. You're gonna be worried about smoking a few leaves? Balbasar. Pika Pika! Pikachu! I don't know, Pikachu. It seems a little questionable to me. Come on, Ash. As the de as the older teenager of this group, I'm clearly the de facto adult. You can trust me when I say smoking bulba blunts. Is totally okay. I guess if the oldest male figure that I hang out with on a regular basis says this is okay, then it must be okay. Seeing as how I grew up without a dad and have no father figure. Don't worry, Ash. We all grew up without dads. Hey, Ash. Yeah, Brock? Have you ever touched a boob? W what? Nothing. Hello, welcome back to Ruben Uncut. I'm, of course, Ruben. Be weird if I wasn't. Hops do that sometimes. All right, today's topic, we've been doing a lot of serious shit lately, so today's topic, we're gonna do something that's more for just fun, okay? For today's topic, I'm gonna talk about the wonderful world of Pokemon. I'm sorry. Pokemon, which stands for Pocket Monster. Now, at this point in America's culture, and actually the world's culture, I feel like I don't have to explain entirely to everyone what Pokemon is. It's been around for over 20 years. It, we thought it was a fad, but somehow it became an institution. Surely you've heard of the phone game, the Game Boy games, the Switch games, the animes, the comic books, the endless merchandising tie-ins and card games. It's Pokemon. It's an unstoppable media force that has stormed the world and never let go. It is granted, it is pr absolutely printed money for Nintendo and the other two corporations that own it. That's right, three separate corporations own Pokemon. Nintendo, I think, uh, what are they, Game Freak, and uh, the, Ninten oh, uh, the Pokemon Corporation. Yeah, the other one that owns it, it's literally called the Pokemon Corporation. So that's, that's kind of wild. Well, today I'm going to be talking to you more about the world of Pokemon. Because I, I'm into art, and I'm into storytelling, and I like to think about these kind of things. And when it comes to Pokemon, the world of Pokemon is pretty fascinating. So we're going to talk about that world, and how it's constructed, and why it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> like... Pretty fucked up. We'll get into it. Okay. So, first of all, let's go over the world that Pokemon takes place in. Now, it's worth noting that 
The multitude of different Pokemon games all take place in different regions of the world. And uh, some of them are even meant to represent different cultures. But a lot of the references I'm going to be drawing on are going to be primarily from the original Pokemon and the cartoon. To try and draw in how the world is constructed. Although I have played the Switch game, and I'll, I'll bring up some of the stuff from that. Not the newest one. The, the, the sh uh, sword and shield one. I, for I think I got sword. I think. Uh, but anyways, so first of all, the world of Pokemon is first and foremost what would we refer to in science fiction as an ecotopia, which is essentially a science fiction world where the technology and human progress are one with nature as opposed to um, dominating nature or some other type of dichotomy. The world of Pokemon does feature some factories, and there's even some talk of pollution. However, this is probably hugely offset by the fact that the world of Pokemon is, by and large, like 90% forest and meadows and mountains and shit. Like, like most of Pokemon's world is just wide open spaces just fields it, there is literally not a single human being is not within walking distance of just fucking nature like everyone could like now if you live in a, in the bigger cities which in pokemon from what i can tell from playing games and watching the cartoon that the average city in pokemon is probably smaller than akron ohio And the Pokemon city that's in the movie Detective Pikachu is quite possibly the biggest city in the world. It's either that or the movie just doesn't scale the universe appropriately. But the other thing is, is that while the technology for things like planes and cars do exist, the majority of transportation in the Pokemon world is things like walking on foot, riding a bicycle, taking a train, going on a boat, or just flat out riding your fucking Pokemon. Oh, I should explain this. What is a Pokemon? A Pokemon stands for Pocket Monster. And essentially, the world of Pokemon it's just populated with these Pokemon. I'm going to say Pokemon so many goddamn times, I'm probably going to lose my mind. <sighs> but, essentially, Pokemon are the animals of the Pokemon world. For the most part, as far as I can tell, although sometimes I, I try, I'm, I've been trying really hard since I decided to do this thing to try and remember if I remember ever seeing an animal in Pokemon that was not a Pokemon. And honest to God, I can't think of any. Because Pokemon have an analog for almost every animal you can think of. And some you probably would never have imagined. I'm pretty sure there's a lamp Pokemon. <sighs> but Pokemon also have attributes that are to like 15 different elements, air quotes. When I say elements, I mean things like fire, water, electricity, psychic powers, fighting, rock, earth, earth and rock, it's separate ones, by the way. Metal, shadow, it, it yeah, it, it, loosely, the elements concept is expanded, it starts out loose and just expanded into absurdity beyond that. So that's, I, I guess, my definite, my explanation uh, briefly of what a Pokemon specifically is. But the world they live in is an ecotopia, where essentially the technology is fairly well harmonized with nature and the human population is not just consuming the planet. And also, people pretty much use Pokemon for everything, like 
Like, we imagine the Flintstones using dinosaurs for more things than the Flintstones actually used dinosaurs for. I mean, they use it for a lot of things. But Pokemon is like that concept from the Flintstones amped up to 11. Almost every industry in the world is tied into Pokemon on some level. You are on some level working with inside most people, probably the majority of the population in the Pokemon world are working in some way inside the Pokemon industry because it is an industry that primarily does two things, science, and animal-based fighting blood sports. Both of which primarily focus on Pokemon. So some of you, besides the blood sport thing, some of you are probably thinking, Ruben, this world sounds pretty baller. It's, got, it's basically a hiker and camper's dream world. The most important people in the world are scientists. Oh, and did I mention, oh, and I didn't even mention this to you, there's no real government. Not a sign of government anywhere. Maybe a couple mayors here and there. A police force, but still, uh, no real government. At least nothing beyond, like, a town or city level. So that sounds pretty sweet. But Ruben, you said this was a dystopia. What makes this world so... Fucked up, as you put it. Well, actually, it's pretty simple. You see, because the po world of Pokemon runs on blood. Not just anyone's blood. Children's blood. Allow me to explain. So, first of all, there are a lot of theories online that Pokemon, that the reason there is so many children and not that many dads in the Pokemon world has something to do with a giant war that once took place. And that may very well be true. There are certainly references to some type of war that previously occurred. There's an American soldier in the cartoon named Lieutenant Surge who refers to serving in some type of war. And this could quite possibly be part of the reason. However, I have another reason why nobody's got a fucking dad in these games. Because that is, that is another thing here. This world, I'm getting ahead of myself. In this world, almost every game starts the same. Some games will let you choose if you're a boy or a girl. Some games will even let you choose what skin color you have. The older ones, older ones mostly was just, hey, you're a kid. Get out there, catch some Pokemon. But essentially, the major crux of the games and the cartoon is that there is almost like a strange coming-of-age ritual where the children of the village, when they are around 10 or 11, give or take, depending on the translation of the media you are consuming, are assigned, get to get a Pokemon of their very own, and then they get to wander off into the wilderness to catch, train, and bond with other Pokemon. And this catching and training and bonding with Pokemon will determine what they will do with the rest of their lives. It will. Allow me to continue to elaborate. <clears throat> the best example I can probably use is the first season of the cartoon Pokemon. The cartoon Pokemon stars a hero, well, our hero, the semi-generic everyman, Ash Ketchum. He is a 10 or 11 year old boy who is finally old enough to get his Pokemon and go into the wilderness. Pokemon is the, Ash is interestingly enough, the main character of most, most media adaptations of Pokemon with the exception of 
the main game itself, where you can choose your own name. And basically make up your own Pokemon identity. But for the sake of the medium, Pokemon... Ash is the character who appears in most comic books, most cartoons. You get the idea. On the lunchboxes, he's the kid. In the cartoon, I believe he's about 10. In, the, in a comic book adaptation of Pokemon I used to read when I was a kid, he was about 12. Now, Ash gets his Pokemon, a Pikachu, who refuses to do the other half of the, the name monster, which is the pocket part. Pikachu insists on being outside the ball all the time, which is interesting. But Ash eventually comes to an understanding with his Pokemon, and Pikachu only goes in the ball when he really needs to. Like if he's injured or something. But so, Pokemon Ash journeys off into the wilderness on his birthday with his new Pokemon to start his adventures. And along his adventures, within the first season, he meets a couple of key figures. The first one is Misty. Now, Misty is the first of many love interests, interests for Ash. And by love interest, I mean kind of subtly implied, but... Never really anything going on with it because it's a cartoon for children. Although the creator did make a really weird comment on why Misty has never come back to the cartoon. is uh, Something about Ash has to go off and meet lots of girls. I don't remember the exact quote. But the point is, he, has, he makes his first friend who is Misty, who is a very, who is a very uh, forceful young lady and also a Pokemon trainer who has specialized in water Pokemon. And the reason a trainer, as far as I can tell, the only real logistical reason for a trainer to specialize in one type of Pokemon is to get to be a gym leader, which is a job in the Pokemon world involved heavily with the sport of Pokemon that essentially, it's like a... Like a licensing process as you earn your way to the Olympics? The Pokemon Super Bowl? Something akin to that? Where you gotta go and take on the champions. But before you do that, you have to collect the badges from eight or so different Pokemon trainers. Each of whom has specialized in a very specific type of Pokemon. And when we meet Misty, she is a gym leader who has specialized in water Pokemon. And Misty is somewhere between 11 and 13 years old. But anyways, Misty, Misty is a gym leader and has a job at a gym. It's not really confirmed ever in the games how you get these jobs. I don't know if it's something you have to apply for, if there's a licensing thing. If Misty is just a lot in her just only being a few years older than Ash, has somehow accomplished a lot more, even though she's maybe a year older if at most. A year or two, I guess. But... Or is it... Now, in fairness, Misty might be because her family apparently owns the gym, and when she's not there, her sisters are running it. So maybe they're, so maybe you can hand over a gym license, which seems weird within the context of how a lot of the other things work in the Pokemon world, to be honest. But it is what it is. Ash and Misty then meet and become friends with another soon-to-be iconic character who has come and gone and returned to the show on a number of times and occasions, Brock. Now, Brock is an interesting character for a number of reasons. First of all, many people have mistaken Brock for an adult. He's not. And also because Brock is drawn in a style that is meant to indicate he is a type of Asian other than Japanese. 
Whether he is Chinese or Korean or Taiwanese or something, I honestly couldn't tell you. But that is what the way he is drawn is meant to indicate. Sort of like how Lieutenant Surge is drawn to indicate he is a white guy. Specifically, an American white guy. <laughs> but the point is... But the truth is, Brock is probably about 16, I would guess. And I would guess he's about 16 because when we meet Brock in the cartoon, the heavy implication is is that he is the oldest sibling who is now in charge of taking care of all of his siblings. And he has a bunch of siblings. Now, I don't remember what the cartoon says was going on with his parents. I really don't. However, I don't think it's ever clearly stated what happened to his dad. I, did his mom get sick? Well, even if she didn't get sick, I'm pretty sure I know what the alternative to where she, what she would have done might have been. So these are our heroes, and they go off on their journey to train Pokemon and catch Pokemon and, and, and whatnot. Now, the, the reason that Brock has actually joined them is that he doesn't actually, he doesn't want to be a gym leader anymore. He wants to go off into the world and become a Pokemon breeder, which is someone who specializes in learning how to breed Pokemon, which is interesting because his other main character trait is being a horn dog. <clears throat> uh, Brock is constantly, constantly, unsuccessfully hitting on women all throughout the Pokemon cartoon. <laughs> all the time. This is actually even more of a joke in the comic book where Ash is, for some reason, slightly older, and him and Brock are both like, yeah, we both like ladies. It's an interesting book series. It's a book series that was also censored when it came to America. Uh because the Japanese version of Misty's costume was a bit much for Americans. I don't know that I mean grossly inappropriate. But it was censored when it came to America. So Americans, whoo, dodged a creep bullet. Anyways, moving along. So here's the thing about this. The core conceit of the Pokemon universe is that people... Oh, I, sh I forgot to say what Ash was going to out to be a Pokemon trainer to do. Ash is on the trail of becoming a Pokemon athlete. A star, a celebrity. The guy who gets his face on the Wheaties box because this is a thing in the Pokemon universe actually confirmed by Sword and Shield. If you're really good at Pokemon, you are a celebrity. You are famous. You are rich. You have a lot of clout in society. So, essentially, the Pokemon universe is ruled by scientists and athletes. Although, in fairness, it's kind of like it's kind of like bowling. It's an athletic thing. It's like you don't actually have to be in good shape to be a Pokemon athlete. But let's back up. So that's what Ash wants to do. And he's probably on the trail to the most lucrative of these jobs. I'm actually not sure why. I don't know if Misty went back to the gym eventually to, to take over or whatnot. I just know she was eventually replaced with other female ca companions for Ash to travel the world with. Actually, Brock has been replaced and unreplaced a few times. The show's been on for like 20 fucking years, people. But these characters and their relationships are not as important as what I'm trying to mention their lives and relationships to demonstrate what is the obvious problem with this society. Problem number one. Just, we'll throw out the big one first, okay? A lot of these kids are gonna die. A lot of these children will die. The Pokemon world is not safe. Not at all. There are many Pokemon that you should not go anywhere near unless you are an experienced trainer and have a high power Pokemon with you to help fight that Pokemon to protect you 
from being fucking savage to death by a Pokemon. On top of that, so that's the big one. It's tons of dangerous Pokemon that could easily kill a child everywhere. And the children are being let loose in this environment with the hope that they will learn how to, that they will bond with their Pokemon. By the way, some children struggle to bond with their Pokemon. <laughs> and some children really bad at it. So, like, if you don't bond with the Pokemon, you're probably going to die. Or at least get real fucked up on your way to the nearest town where you give up in shame and become a shopkeeper. Because that's another one of the jobs in the society besides scientists is shopkeepers. Because everyone in Pokemon world's got to buy Pokemon equipment and technology to keep the Pokemon industry going. So they can become Pokemon athletes to sell Pokemon tickets to fund the Pokemon corporations who, by the way, the Pokemon corporations <laughs> run the world. Where was I? Right. So, right there, so a lot of these kids are going to die. Just straight up going to die. Not only that, but... Uh, there is free health care for Pokemon. The, the animals everywhere. Like, y if your Pokemon are sick or dying, you just show up at a Pokemon Med Center. You're like, sure, put them on the machine. Bam. They're good. Free health care for all Pokemon. But the show never clears up what the hell happens to humans if they get sick. And every city, every town has a Pokemon Center. But if I, in the time that I have played the video games, I have maybe been to one city with a fucking hospital. And sure, a lot of these cities are in bike distance to each other, but you're not going to bike a sick person to a hospital. And some of those cities, there's like a fucking mountain full of dangerous Pokemon in between you and the city. <sighs> then we come to, this is another big one. You see, here's the thing. Most Pokemon kids are depicted as traveling A alone Actually, wait, let's back up. I forgot. There's another profession that's very important to this conversation, uh, which is another profession in the Pokemon world, is criminals. The world still has fucking criminals. In fact, almost every game has its own unique fucking gang running around causing mayhem for criminal purposes. And in fact, and the most iconic of these gangs, of course, being... Team Rocket, who is, qu who are quite influential throughout the world and are constantly robbing Pokemon trainers regardless of their age. Like, people don't stop to think about how evil Jesse and James really are until you stop to realize that the majority of the people that they are victimizing are children, are children and teenagers. People that they are much more physically powerful on than the... Like, they are more physically powerful than the average person they're attacking. And sure, they, but we, we laugh at them because Ash's Pikachu just whips their asses every single time to a comedic degree. But the reality is, is that they're not the only Team Rocket members running around. And clearly, someone on Team Rocket is successfully robbing and hurting children because they haven't collapsed as a criminal organization. In fact, they're quite successful, and they are actively in the power systems of the Pokemon world because the leader of Team Rocket is the final gym leader before you get to go to the Pokemon Super Bowl <laughs> in the first game. So the Pokemon world has a lot of co criminal element running around and constantly victimizing these children who have no defenses except a Pokemon that, in fairness, the criminals are trying to steal from them. Then we got... But this is... But ultimately, this all leads to the same thing. And it's all related to the same major core issue, 
which is that Pokemon is a universe that runs on the concept of children running around in a dangerous environment with zero parental anything. Like, literally, these shows happen, and the kids just hit it on the road. And, like, Ash has had to go through some harrowing shit. Like, you gotta deal with the weather. You gotta deal with Pokemon attacks. You gotta, you gotta eat. You gotta find food. It, when you lose a Pokemon match to someone, you're supposed to give them half your money. That's how the economy of Pokemon works. You have to beat someone and take half their money. And what that means is you can eventually just run out of fucking money. It's, who <laughs> it, it doesn't seem like the best environment for children. You know what I mean? Not only that, but these are children on the cusp of puberty. These are children going into puberty. These are children in puberty in the most confusing times of their lives. These, peop these kids are going to be vulnerable to anyone who wants to, well, you know, numerous types of predator adult predators could easily prey on any of these unsupervised children. And these unsupervised children could easily prey on each other. Think about the bullies in your schools. Think about bullies in schools. There's some kids who either because of damage or something else, fucking up other kids. And a lot of times that's because they don't know who they are yet and they want to establish themselves as being superior. And these kids are all in a competitive culture of animal fighting. <laughs> so of course, some of them are gonna be freaking dicks. Some of them are gonna definitely bully other kids. Some of them might even bully other kids in the forest to death. And then what are the consequences gonna be? Oops, I guess I'm just gonna move on to the next town like a drifter. I turned 14 tomorrow. That's the world of Pokemon. Not only that, but basically, these kids are definitely gonna be experimenting with drugs and, and, and sex. Oh, for sure. Like, it's fun, it's funny to laugh at the concept that the internet is full of Pokemon porn, cause it is. But like, at the same time, like, the reality is, is that some of these porn situations would happen because just horny kids run around the woods. Like, if we take the Pokemon universe and apply the logic and rules of the real world, we're talking about a situation where people are essentially going through puberty while also just trying not to die in a forest or get robbed and murdered it, and assaulted and shit. Like, it's insane if you think about it. And the Pokemon world essentially runs on this. Kids getting their Pokemon and going off into the woods. And then going, and then figuring out what they're going to do with the Pokemon. And then some of them will go on to have jobs in the Pokemon industries for the Pokemon corporations who clearly provide the free health care to their Pokemon, but don't seem to do the same for humans. Or the Pokemon athletes will battle on TV and in giant arenas for the amusement of however many people live in this world, because the population definitely looks like it's declined. Until, and this is, this is the thing, this is my theory on why there, nobody has dads in Pokemon, the games. It's because the people who have children were the Pokemon trainers who got pregnant and then couldn't keep on training Pokemon, so they had to settle down in the nearest town while the, while the, whatever 
16 or 15 or 17 year old knock them up has to keep on going to fight Pokemon so we can get money to send home to the wife and kid so that his kid can then grow up to go off into the forest and then either become a successful athlete or work in some other Pokemon industry or get pregnant and end up in a small town where they send their child off into the wilderness to hunt Pokemon who then gets pregnant who then goes to the village and then sends their child it's, it's just a cycle, man. The Pokemon world is just a vicious, child-eating cycle. Goddamn. I haven't even mentioned the fact that in the cartoon, Ash's mom is... Definitely fucking Professor Oak, the scientist in town who gives Ash his Pokemon. I mean, come on. If you've seen the cartoon, you know what I'm talking about. I don't say it. But I think it's pretty clear what's going on. <sighs> oh, where was I? I got, I got all emotional about the cycle. But I guess that's basically my point. That, that's my theory on the Pokemon world. Because as the consistent tropes go through the series, that's one of the big ones. You're a kid in a village. You got a mom, but no dad. You go out, you Pokemon it up. That's your adventure. The universe of Pokemon implies that there are all types of different Pokemon-related jobs that these kids will grow up to do if it turns out they don't have what it takes to be a Pokemon master like Ash is planning and hoping to be. Ash, by the way, who it took 22 years for him to win that Pokemon Super Bowl. And by that I mean 22 seasons of Pokemon to win a Poke Super Bowl. So yeah, on the surface... The world of Pokemon is a beautiful, naturific, idyllic world that just happens to run on the suffering of children and animals. Is there a deep harm a bond sorry, is there a deep bond and harmony between those children and animals? Sure. Is it a fun video game? Absolutely. Is it horrifying if you stop to think about what this world would really be like for even a few minutes? Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Thank you for joining me here on my podcast today. This is, once again, Ruben Uncut. Please, um, like, subscribe, or review. I found out that today, apparently, people can rate and review podcasts on Apple so I know, I know some of y'all are, I know some of y'all are listening on Apple. So you know, if you, if you listen on Apple, you know, drop me, drop me some uh, some positive feedback on there. Really appreciate it. I know that not all the podcast services that offer my podcast have that feature. I just know that yours does. Google probably also has something like that, but ain't nobody fucking listening on Google. I looked the numbers. Nobody likes Google. Nobody likes Google Podcasts, that's for sure. Mm -mm. Where was that? Right. Uh, so, yes, please um, like, subscribe, do whatever you do, wherever you get your podcast to continue to enjoy this podcast. I promise, if you keep listening, I'll eventually get a good microphone so that it, it, there won't be quite as much of an ASMR uh, element to this thing and maybe you, you won't constantly hear me clear my throat and stuff which is a thing I can't unhear while I'm doing the editing I try and take them out because I'm like oh god that sound but you know I just uh, can't catch them all you know what I mean kind of like Pokemon alright take it easy you can email the show at rubinuncut at gmail.com Find me on Twitter at 
uh, son of hippies. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and if you go to Anchor, you can leave me a voicemail. All right. Go to bed. I don't know why. I, uh, that was weird. You might be listening to this during the day, and I might have just totally fucked up your day by sending you to bed early. In which case, I apologize. Don't go to bed. Unless, unless it's the appropriate time that you normally go to bed. Time is an illusion. Well, Brock, I've got some news for you. Oh, yeah? What's that? Well, Brock, you finally caught them all. I caught all the Pokemon? Hell yeah! No, no, Brock, you, you've caught all the, you've caught all the STDs. W what? You, you have all the STDs now. You, you got them all. I, I told you, I told you to wrap, to wrap it up, Brock, and you, you clearly haven't. What? I, come on, man. There's no formal sexual education in this society. How was I supposed to know? Well... Brock, I, I guess with, I guess that's a good question, but uh, you should sit down for this. What? Brock, as your doctor, I have to tell you, when I say you've got them all, I mean you've got them all. What? What, what do you mean? I'm sorry, Brock, but you have pokey aids. No! Now, now, Brock, the fact that you have pokey aids implies that you may have been experimenting with pokey sexuality, having sex with Pokemon, or possibly you had sex with someone else who had sex with the Pokemon. What? Does it does it matter uh, for my for my treatment? Which of those I I, I am? Well, uh. No, I, I guess technically not. Uh, so I guess you don't have to tell me which of those things it was, Brock. But, uh... Stop having sex with Pokemon. 